Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be continuing a budget, mid budget, no budget version of a particular deck build. We've done this for about five or six color palettes now. Um, you can catch it all on the channel already. Um, but the theme of these decks is to start off with a deck that's pretty much all commons and uncommons. From there, uh, what we want to do is have like a mid budget deck, which is like five to 12 rares and mythics, and then a no budget version of the build. Uh, with the budget version, the only caveats that we have to the uncommons and uncommons is to include free cards you get in the starter decks, as well as some number of the dual lands. So the dual lands are the shock lands or the buddy lands. Uh, this is important to just have consistent mana base. So it's something that we look for when we are playing. We want to ensure that we have consistent mana. Um, in this case here, I'm missing a couple Sun Petal Groves. I don't normally play green-white, so I'm not really interested in crafting these right now. So we'll try it out with just basics in this case. Um, so this deck here is a green-white or Selesnia build. And what we're playing around is the 1-1 one -one counter themes. So we're trying to put counters on our stuff, make them bigger. And then with the proliferate mechanic, we're looking to uh, add more counters to them and essentially make really big creatures smash the opponent's face. Um, so how we're doing this is building on uh, something that we've played a lot is the explore package. So uh, Wild Growth Walker gets 1-1 counters whenever we explore. You have Merfolk Branch Walker that can get 1-1 counters. We have Ixali's Diviner that can also get 1-1 counters. Uh, the notable thing here we're missing is Jade Light Ranger, which is a rare. If you have some of those, definitely include them. Uh, the rest of the deck to put counters, you have stuff like Pollen Bright Druid that can put 1-1 counters or if need be can proliferate. And then we have Stony Strength that can be a combat trick with a 1-1 counter. We have a Danto Vanguard, which is a very good thing to put counters onto. Uh, we could pay for life and make it indestructible. So it's a way to keep a creature alive after like a board wipe. Uh, we also have Hualtli's uh, Raptor. Uh, so when it enters the battlefield, it could proliferate. And a 2-3 body with Vigilance on its own for 2 mana is pretty effective. Uh, Militia Buellers in this deck as a card draw engine. It could pretty much hit any creature in our deck with power 2 or greater other than Evolution Sage. Um, so this just keeps the card draw going, which is something really important for what we're looking for. Um, we have Evolution Sage, wherever it enters the battle, whenever a land enters the battlefield, we proliferate. So that's another good card there. Uh, Zhang Zhengu uh, can put counters on it, and if we need to, can serve as mana ramp. Want to try out a Pledge of Unity. It's just like an Anthem effect. This would be replaced by the Ajani if you have one. Uh, Johnny is something good that we want to play. That'll be in the mid-budget versions. Conclave Tribunal for some removal, catch-all exile. And then this is a Path to Discovery, which is a free card that you get, which turns all our creatures into Explore creatures. Uh, the mana base is pretty standard. You got your, your basics, some duels, and I wanted to try out a couple Field of Ruins. Uh, works nicely with the Proliferate from the land drop, and a lot of people are playing greedy mana bases now, so we can take advantage of that. Uh, the sideboard is pretty straightforward, deals with flyers, deals with planeswalkers, deals with enchantments, uh, catch-all removal and exile, uh, again something like Baby Teferi. Uh, Golgari Raiders is against board wipe decks, it could come down with haste and just try to one-shot our opponent. And I want to try out Vraska against heavy board wipe removal decks, and then just to threaten planeswalkers. And because we got sweep, uh, stained glass art. So we'll take the deck for a spin. Uh, I'll play a couple games of best of three and then test it out in the best of one. Uh, so the best of one will be towards the end of the video, just so you can see how it works in both sides. Um, so we'll get started here. So for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm MTG Joe. Uh, we play everything from super budget builds to tier 1 decks to janky brews and everything in between. I'll usually put up between 3 to 7 videos a week on the YouTube channel, occasionally going live on YouTube as well. Anything that we play on the channel will be replayed up on YouTube so you can catch it whenever you like. Uh, we'll mulligan this hand. Oof, it's ugly. Okay, we'll keep this. Um, and like I said, uh, the channel itself, if you're enjoying the content, it is currently unsponsored. The best way you can show your support is by hitting that subscribe button. It's a free and easy way to show your support to the channel. 
so the opponent is on a very similar build, Growth Chamber Guardian is something interesting as well for a non-budget consideration version. So they can adapt here, so we're not going to block. Uh, so no blocks here. We can gain the life back. Opponents opting not to adapt here. Okay, so... Opponent is on a very similar game plan to us. Okay, drawing nothing but forced isn't helping the cause. We'll just pass the turn here. So we were hoping to actually hit something to put a counter on this so we could have proliferated. Here... We can decide if we want to force their mana. Let's just block like that. Next turn, I think we field of ruin for a white source. And then uh, play Watley's Raptor. Conclave Tribunal is also pretty good. Ah. So I think just with the mana screw, we lose this game. Just gonna concede here. I'm pretty far behind and just missing the man the land drop. Uh, in this matchup, Vraska's good. And some prison realms to exile their creatures. And Ixalan's binding. Stony strength's likely not gonna do much. Adanto's gonna get outclassed pretty easily. Uh da da da. -da. We need one more cut. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get rid of probably a militia bugler. So it's funny that we got queued up against pretty much the mirror. Uh, one thing, if you could let me know how the audio is in a comment. I was having some trouble earlier this week on a couple of videos. Man, we just cannot, for the life of us, hit a white source. I'm going to explore and then play out Evolution Sage. And then put a counter on Sage. Uh, we're going to graveyard this because we don't have white mana. So opponent's ramping here. Uh, uh, so here, sorry about the dog. I think we just take a setup turn and then we can branch rocker ideally. No attacks. So they play flower. So might want to revise the number of white sources in this deck. Seems like we're consistently missing or play a couple tap lands just to see. Uh, no blocks on our end just yet. We're fine to take this damage. And they have Shalai. Okay, so that's our white source. So here... I think we go Pollen Bright Druid, put a 1 1 counter on the Sage, proliferate. And then just set up for the next turn. Perfect. So I'm gonna attack for five. Next turn, what we're going to do is we can Prison Realm and a land. So we can get rid of their Shalai, which is nice. And then also play Ixalan's Diviner. 
So we'll probably take Diviner first. Shalai is another nice pump effect that you can put counters on your team. So here... I'm okay to block if they have like a pump spell into something else. Yeah. So they get pseudo adapt here, but they can't. So here, like I said, we're gonna play out the diviner first. Uh, we will library that. Play a land. Proliferate the team. Just shut off Shalai. Keep that on top. That'll deal with all their ground creatures. And here, just smash it. So it's 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're actually one mana off from just killing him this turn. So we'll poke him for everything. So Vraska can start dealing some de uh, with some Death Touchers. And this is basically what I wanted to see out of the deck. You're rewarded for land drops. These explore creatures either put counters on or help you dig for more land drops. We'll make a revision after this match and just uh, tweak the white sources because it's been two games that we've been kind of low on them. Opponent's thinking they need to play out two creatures and play defense here. Opponent says GG. Okay, so we got that one. So we did see Shalai out of our opponent, but I think we're still good. We have enough exile effects to deal with it. We effectively have seven enchantment exiles. So we'll run those back. We are getting nowhere. Okay, we'll keep this. Do I want Wild Growth Walker? Probably. So, opponent's ramping nicely. Here they miss the land, which is advantageous for us. We hit the land, we could also field them if need be to fix our mana. Next turn I'm going to Militia Bugler. Or we can just get that going. So we're gonna keep that on top. That gets our things bigger. This also is an anthem. Okay, so another white source. Gonna attack for three. Seal away. Wasn't expecting that. So, a little further behind now. That's a pretty good engine. So, land would be good, so we can go. Not the best land, but it's something. Uh, 
Ixalan's binding, pretty good. I'm gonna put a 1 1 counter on this Diviner, and then both attack Zheng Jing. They'll block one. So the Ixalan's binding means even if they kind of get a counter on that, we can turn it off. This can help us dig if need be. Them not hitting non-basics is kind of hurting us. Knight of Autumn. It's a little premature in my opinion. Because we can just shut it off. So like here, unless they have another Knight of Autumn, no attacks. Next turn will Bugler. Okay, so Vraska. Ugh, whiffing there, especially with two exile hurts. No attacks. We have so many two drops in our deck to miss their hurts. So, cash is in on Shalai. Another Zhangju. They hit us there. Ugh. Another Vraska doesn't help. So keeping Vraska is actually wrong of us. Uh, here. Attack like that. So they take the trade. There was a play we attack with everything. Okay. Wasn't really going to be playing around as sure. We'll do this together. Really need our opponent to play a non basic. Okay, so we drew a forest, which is good. So let's try to get Jang done. Again, they might have pump effects, but. We'll see. These all add mana because of Zhang. Coming and you see an assassin coming for you. So this is a good way to just block. They're gonna attack with Shalai. We can just keep making tokens. The very least, it gives us time to dig to try to get an exile effect. Ah. They hit the Knight of Autumn. The thing is with Selesnia, a lot of the good cards are at rare. Unfortunately, like you see the Power of Growth Chamber, Shalai, and Knight of Autumn. Okay, so we're just playing... Mono Death Touchers. Oh, 
just gonna concede this one. There's low likelihood of us coming back from it. We binned a couple of our good exile ones. And if anything, that showed you some improvements to the deck as well. So it was actually a pretty good matchup to just kind of see where the deck can transition into. I'd rather just kind of highlight quickly a couple of the variants. We're not obviously trying to get to Mythic with this deck right now. It's really just to show you how the deck can be lay out, some of the lines, some of the effectiveness. We saw in game two that we have some of those effects. Uh, so we'll keep this. Uh, so we'll lead on forest. Depending kind of what the opponent shows. So they're on an elf plan. So here... Probably just go Wild Growth Walker. They might be on Gruel, they might be on a couple things. Just likely Bant Flash. They missed there, which is good for us. So it's not the optimal play, but I want to kill the Vivian. If we draw another land, Path of Discovery with this Wild Growth Walker is going to get crazy. This basically just saved him to life. Oh, they did get a creature. It stays exiled. Okay, so they don't make it as obvious. Okay, opponent's ramping. It's odd by the opponent. Um, just throw on some prison realms. Okay. <coughs> Opponent does not want to play a Wild Growth Walker budget deck. It's the one issue with playing with some of the best of or the unranked. People uh, get a little fed up. So I'm actually going to have to wrap it up after this one, unfortunately. So I won't be able to do the best of one. But we'll try to do this match really quick, so we'll keep this. I like seeing that with Wild Growth. This is Esper. It's going to be a tough matchup. Tough, tough matchup for us. Also, this getting no power. Uh, I'm just gonna play a different match, I think. With this being budget, you're gonna have a very hard time beating Esper. The fact they have hand destruction removal and like we don't get some key cards that come. So it's just knowing like some of the limitations. Like we are playing ultimately a budget deck. For us to play a budget deck and be effective, we would need it to be fairly aggressive, um, which we're not getting in this case. So I just want to be mindful of your time, knowing where we can and can't succeed. Okay, so opponent plays first.
Now we're getting the opposite. Jeez. Sorry, we've just been running odd with lands today. We'll just start the match again. Sorry for the gameplay. I want to try to use this more as instructional. Us playing like a hand of four cards is not really demoing the deck. I'll play it more seriously when we're doing like mid-budget and no-budget because that's really where you start seeing. This is more of a bridge deck. Okay, we'll keep this hand. I will say like in general, Selesnia is my least favorite color. It's not something I generally enjoy playing. That's why it's one of the, the latter of them. If we can hit an explore creature, we're in a good spot. Okay, so this is mono red phoenix. So we'll force him to use it. They just straight phoenixes? Jeez. Uh, so here... Gonna be mana efficient. And just play... The oh, no, no! Damn. I meant to play out the evolution sage. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do Evolution Sage there. So this is a Phoenix, not Mono Red. They've had three Phoenixes. Like, it's a slower start, but to, to been three Phoenixes, and now they're going to bring them back. Yeah, they just nine us. That's a pretty crazy draw early for Phoenix. Okay, so Crawl Harpooner in this matchup. Prison Realm, Ixalan's Binding, uh, coming out, Stony Strength, uh, Militia Bugler's actually okay, Evolution Sage just gets shocked, Pledge of Unity's not bad, Path of Discovery's probably a little too slow, and... Just want to more aggro them. So we'll be on the play here. Okay, sense better. They play enough basics that Field of Ruin's not relevant. They shock there. They opt. Pass turn. They lava coil. Bit unfortunate. So we'll play out the diviner here. Uh, I'm going to graveyard this at this point. Watley's raptor is pretty good on top. Here I want to slow him down. Electromancer gives him a lot of kind of oomph. This can kill any of their f 
first phoenix is. Yeah, so we can kill that, play Watley's Raptor. Cool. Let's see what we got first. Chipping in. Don't mind our position right now. Another crackling Drake. Oh, not the worst. So here we can branch walker. We get a land. Play out the lands. Just answering all their threats. Was really hoping to put a counter on this to make uh, the Watley's Raptor a little bit more effective. hands not nearly as ridiculous as the last game. Bacon bolts. That's a sweet draw. Smash for six. Beacon Bolt can kill four toughness, but it loses, so it's only three. So it could get rid of the Branch Walker. Another Drake. I'm gonna put an upkeep stop because I want to thin out our deck. Pretty aggressive line by the opponent. They do get an untap land, but I think we just want forest. Pledge of unity on top would be good. Uh, just try to chip in as much damage as possible. this point. We just gotta keep poking away at him. They need some more creatures because they block here. Uh, they got the lava coil. So let's see what we get on top. Field of Ruin, not the best. Well, we're not winning by not attacking. That's for sure. So they need a creature to block or a removal spell or they're dead. They hit the removal spell. 
So they're still dead to an exile effect. So just gonna thin out the deck some more. Got him. So everyone thought we were going to get the Pollen Bright Druid beatdowns, obviously. Um, so... Do we just want more... Reasonable threats. They showed the lava coils. Maybe some Vraskas. Go like that. Run it back. So we had a good mix of answers that game. We'll keep this. See what the opponent plays out. Uh, let's go with Danto on one. They want to burn a lava coil here. Uh, so not the best. See what they got. It's part of the reason why I like Adanto. So we went this route for the fact that it opens us up a little bit more. Uh, really wanted to draw a land there. So here they have to decide if they want to take four and the turn. Next turn I'm going to force in the Pollen Bright Druid. If we don't draw a land, I might just Conclave Tribunal actually. Because I need to get something in the graveyard as well to make this start killing. We're like a land away. From just going off. Electromancer starts getting explosive. We also need to be aware they might bring in spell pierce and or dive down. Okay, so we got the land here. Which is great. So here we can... Play out Watley's Raptor. Let's 
Let's see if they block here. So we're gonna do this because I want to kill the Electromancer. Then we can exile the Crackling Drake. Now we're in a good spot. We're basically lined up with removal. So any creatures they play. That's fine. And especially now that they're tapped out, it's a clean path. So our budget deck took down is a Phoenix, which is a pretty good matchup. Like I said, the hard control decks, you're going to have a difficult time. But that's what I like Adanto for. Uh, here... I'm going to Ixalan's Binding, just because all future Drakes are dead draws. Now they're basically dead, just with our hand. Uh, Sahili could block for a bit, but we prison realm it. Come on, opponent. Come on. So they play the Lava Coil. Pretty good on their part. I'm just going to Prison Realm. Here we just smash in. And similar to last game, they're pretty far behind. Especially blue-red, they're not dealing with any of these. It's unlikely they're playing blink of an eye. Pretty sweet. Finale of Promise. They're dead to any explore creature off the top. So not quite that, but... The opponent's reaching. And they're really uh, digging down. That's the thing with Izzy Phoenix, I find. You can have games where you just go nuts, like that first game where they had 9 power on turn 3 and like shocked us a bunch of times or you can just have turn games where you're losing to like budget stuff beacon bolt flashback beacon bolts to get rid of a token yep in fact I have to get rid of apex So we're just doing this in case they have removal. Like this, they need two pieces of removal. Also, with all the proliferate in our deck, we can also plus Vraska to get extra draws out of it. We're going to field them on end step to thin out our deck. That's fine. Waste your mana. It's actually one of the better things to discard. That's 
fine. You don't do anything. Yep. Uh, reckless and unpredictable. Unless you have two shocks. This which if you do, then... I commend you. He had the double shock. I'll give him that. Don't worry. I won't rain on your and you took out Vraska. The, the opponent had it. Here, I think we just because I want to keep the removal in case they draw like a phoenix so it doesn't actually do anything. So, yeah. So they can scry, radical idea. You must be accompanied by a parent or guardian to ride the lightning. Keep it on top, they can radical idea it. Uh, they have a lightning strike. At the very least, we should have done this first. We could have scryed. So now they can copy spells, so we want to exile it. Pollen Bright serves as, it could put a counter on this, and also as a one power. Come on, opponent. Okay, so you got the lava coil. Got him! Ba boom boom Alrighty, so we'll wrap it up. I'll try to get the rest of the mid-budget and non-budget versions up later this week. If you enjoy the content, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, and have a great one. Enjoy playing Magic this week. Thanks for watching.